Dao Ji Kun Do, page number 18. Form is the cultivation of resistance. It is the exclusive drilling of a pattern of choice moves. Instead of creating resistance, enter straight into the movement as it arises. Do not condemn or condone. Choiceless awareness leads to the reconciliation with the opponent and a total understanding of what is. Once conditioned in a partialized method, once isolated in an enclosing pattern, the practitioner faces his opponent through a screen of resistance. He is performing his stylized blocks and listening to his own screaming and not seeing what the opponent is really doing. I mean, I can't reflect on that. I just can only question that. Alright, go ahead. So what does he mean like uh, at the end is a point? He's talking about people that practice a bunch of forms okay. and then they're not good at sparring. Like there's there during his time there's a lot of people out there that are practicing martial arts but they'd just be doing a bunch of forms, but when it came to sparring, they couldn't re respond to the moment. Or you know? Nail it. Yeah, they just... It's like they would imagine how it would be to fight, yeah. but then they wouldn't f actually fight in order to learn how to fight, and then they'll be responding off of those imaginations. So, he's... In this, this teaching, he's mainly talking about the importance of like just being alive and in the moment and just responding to that moment. He's like basically trying to encourage people to learn how to actually spar mm. opposed to just like practicing forms, you know. So in the way would you like uh, technically like go with the flow, like let be? I mean, yes and no, like yes, if you're trained in a scientific method, then you could go with the flow, but if you're not trained and you don't know what you're doing, yeah. then going with the flow could, could be mean like you letting your guard down and then all of a sudden you get knocked in the face and knocked out because you went with the flow and you had bad technique, you know? So go with the flow, but if you have good technique and you have your 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 science your you're moving in a scientific way, then yes, of course go with the flow. Cause then you're you're that's why I keep training you guys to not have bad habits. Yeah. So then when you have good habits in, in the drills and even in the forms, but you have good habits in the drills, then when you actually fight and you spar then you can go with the flow because you develop good habits, you know, good responses. Like say somebody, if I showed you guys, okay, somebody's about, he's trying to take you down, he's trying to do a single leg takedown, what do you do? And I show you some options or he tries to punch you in the face, what do you do? He tries to kick you, what do you do? And then you're responding in a more scientific way and you keep repeating those patterns like those responses into something that's going to be effective then you can go with the flow you know because whatever the flow is going to work for you but like i said you're un somebody's untrained mm. they're just going to get demolished against somebody that knows the science that's untrained that is trained you know and then if they go with the flow they get destroyed you know We are those kata, we are those classical blocks and thrusts, so heavenly conditioned are we by them.
So when he says kata, that's a Japanese term. Like those classical blocks and thrusts. It's almost like when he says that, I can envision him just looking at a karate guy and just being like, this is a joke. You know, like that's like, I think like Bruce is like, he's like more fluid and he would like, he would, uh, it's almost like he's comparing like, like to the, in the today's time, like, like a Floyd Mayweather yeah. in boxing, like very, like fluid. And then you, you, you compare that to like somebody who's doing a kata. He's almost like comparing both and be like, you know, that kata stuff is just not going to work. And in a way, you know, he's, depending on who you're watching, mm. it could be, he could be correct. But at the same time, remember his movies, those fights in the movies, mm. I could almost say that those are katas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not so rigid, that it's fluid, it's, it's effective. But that's Bruce's kata. So it just depends on who's doing the kata. So, because I have no clue what kata is, it's just like... It's, it's, a, like... it's a form. So kata is like, it's like, it's kind of like the phoenix form, like the like the like the tiger form. Like, it's like somebody, like in karate, they call it kata. Like they'll start, and then they'll just start fighting imaginary opponents. But it's like a set pattern that everybody learns. Mm. You know, that's like a kata. But you know, like boxers, they they call it shadow boxing, mm. where they just fight an imaginary opponent. But it's not the same pattern. That's like a spontaneous kata, basically. Like just like a boxer who just keeps hitting the punching bag, that's like a spontaneous pot kata. Mm -hmm. Now, a fixed kata is like say a boxer who does the same shadow boxing routine over and over and over again for like ten years. That's kind of like a fixed kata, and that's like like there's just different forms of katas. To me, the statement he's just criticizing a kata that he's seen what people do. That he's just be like, man, that that's that that doesn't work, but it doesn't mean that somebody that is skillful can't create a kata that does work, because everybody has their own training methods. Like, you know, Floyd Mayweather does a bunch of jump rope and he do, he hits the focus mitts a lot. He hits the punching bag. Those, in a way, it's it's not too different from a kata. It's just like a routine of training that you keep doing over and over again until you get good. And that's essentially what a kata is. It's just a routine of your training of what you think is going to be effective for combat. And you just keep doing it over and over again until you get good. And then you end up becoming effective in combat. It's just a training method. And he's just basically criticizing somebody that he's seen where he's like, you know what, that training method doesn't work. Just like right now, we just talked in the other room and I'm, I'm criticizing the training methods of bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. That's like their kata, like their way of training chest day, back day, bicep day, this many sets, that many reps. That's like their kata, like their method. And he's just criticizing somebody's method as not being effective. But it doesn't mean that people should stop practicing katas altogether. Yeah. It's just that you got to create a kata that you think would be effective and then just do it, you know. And it doesn't have to be fixed. It could be spontaneous if you want. You don't have to memorize anything, you know. But just because you memorize something doesn't mean that it's not effective, you know. So, that's what I get from that one. To fit in with an opponent, one needs direct perception. There is no direct perception where there is a resistance. Uh, this is the only way attitude. To fit in. To fit in with an opponent, one needs direct perception. There is no direct perception where there is a resistance. Uh, this is the only way attitude. Okay, so what he's saying is that if you're fighting somebody, you need to respond to that moment. At, to that moment. Okay. Like, for what it is. 
And it could be anything. He could pull out a gun, he could pull out his knife, he could have his friends behind him. He could um, punch you, kick you, bum rush you, throw rocks at you. Like, you don't know what he's going to do. Try to run his car over you. Like, you need a direct perception. You got to deal with it at that moment. Now, he's saying there's no direct perception if there is resistance, meaning like preconceived ideas of this is the only way that you could handle this situation. So it's like me saying, okay, you guys are doing a drill, and then I said, okay, he's doing a front kick, and then I show you, okay, this is the only thing that you could do to respond. Nothing else. You can only do it this way. That's what he's saying, like, where it's like, you, you think that there's only one way to do it. You don't realize that there's, like, multi, you know, multiple ways of handling a situation, you know? Yeah. So... I think that's in a lot of people's heads today, like, you can only do this, you know, that's what I hear a lot, like, you can only do this, mm. do that, like, so that's why I don't really get that. No, it's like, yeah, I mean, you don't want to get stuck in that, like, you want to be able to have, like, different options and handle it in different ways, and there might even be a way that you creatively come up with where you just, um, that wasn't thought of before. But my, my thing is, my approach is showing you, you know, different methods to spark the creativity within yourself to, to find out what works for you. Because for example, like, being at your height, your weight, your, your fitness level, I might show you a certain approach to, a, you know, responding to a certain technique, but then somebody who's bigger than you or whatever, I might have them respond differently because they're, they're built differently, so. Or it just might be, you know, just handling a situation differently. Like, you know, say you're driving your car and then, um, you know, you, you cut somebody off by accident or something like that. They get very angry and then you guys are at a stoplight. He gets out the car, starts banging on your window. And then at that moment, you could decide, okay, I'm going to respond like this. And then you end up getting in a... It, then it starts escalating and you guys actually get in a fist fight. Or you could be like, you know what? Let me just uh, chill. I'll apologize. And then now he calms down and you guys don't fight at all. So then you, you essentially came up with another method to handle the situation rather than having to go further. You know? Like, it's just... There's different ways to handle different situations. He's basically saying. All right, having totality means being capable of following what is, because what is is constantly moving and constantly changing. If one is anchored in a particular view, one will not be able to follow the swift movement of what is. Alright, what he's saying, basically, is just saying, um, it goes along the, the lines of what we just talked about. He says, being total means just responding to that moment for what it is, you know. And he's saying, whoever you're fighting, whoever's in front of you, it's always going to be changing and always moving. Like, it's not going to be stagnant and the same. So, it could be something similar to, like, even a game of billiards, like it's never going to be the same exact game. It's always different, you know. A game of basketball or just, just life. Like every single day is different. Like no two days are exactly the same. There's always something different. So he's saying when you're fighting somebody, there's always going to be something different. And you got to be aware to that moment. Like you can't just assume that it's going to be this way, you know, or a certain way, you know. So just respond to the moment to to what whatever you're dealing with, whatever situation. Alright, I'm gonna stop there.